In my last video on how to build smarter automations in Home Assistant, I used presence detection as a trigger in my example automation. In the comments, Tom Callahan and a handful of others wanted some more details on how Home Assistant knows whether my family is home or away. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to answer that question, and then I'm going to walk through what I would do if I was building this system from scratch today and wanted to use nothing but the UI. So stick around, because we're about to automate some boring stuff. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome to Slacker Labs. If this is your first time here, my name is Jeff. And here at Slacker Labs, we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using Home Assistant. I think presence detection is critical to a successful smart home. In fact, it may be the most important piece of data your smart home needs to make good decisions. And honestly, this is something I have struggled with for a long time. The biggest problem I've had with presence detection in Home Assistant is all based on timing. Most of the presence detection integrations rely on API calls to update location, and these are done on a set interval. The longer the interval between updates, the greater the chance you're going to be inside your house before Home Assistant even knows you've gotten home. Finding the right balance between speed and not killing the battery on your phone has been a challenge. If you had asked me a month ago, I would have told you the best solution was Life360 using If This Then That to call a webhook in Home Assistant. But then, if this then that had to pee in their pool while everyone watched and sent most of us running. And because it's 2020, Life360 followed that up with a notification that they were killing their if this then that integration anyway. And like so many other home automation services in recent months, it was time to find a different solution. And while that means I'm probably back to tinkering with my presence detection way more than I want to, I think I have a pretty good foundation. Unfortunately, this part of my configuration is not really easy to follow, so bear with me. To solve the timing issue, I'm using four presence detection integrations. The Home Assistant iOS app, Life360, Apple iCloud, and Waze. All of these integrations leverage mobile phones, which is probably the best source for location anyway. As long as people don't leave their phones at home or turn off the location services for these apps and have to be constantly reminded that the security system relies on knowing where they are. Of course, that's not a conversation I've ever had with my wife, so I suspect that part might be a non-issue. With the exception of the Home Assistant app, all of these services use API calls. But they're all built-in integrations, and they can easily be installed, although some of them do require you to make changes directly to your configuration.yaml. Since I'm using multiple device trackers, I leverage the person's entity so that I can assign multiple trackers and location sensors to a single user in Home Assistant. This way, the state or location of the person entity is based on whatever device tracker was the last to update. I also leverage a group called Family that simply contains all of the person entities I want to track. This way, the state of the group is based on whether all of the persons are away, in which case the group is not home, or as long as one of the persons is home, the state of the group is home. The next piece is the Family Status Sensor. And this sensor simply tells me whether the family is home or away. And I use automations and scripts to ensure that it gets updated with the correct status when people come and go. So now that we've got the high level out of the way, let's get into the weeds. But before we do that, one last warning. If structured text or configuration files make you squeamish, you might want to skip ahead to the next part. Because this part of my configuration is completely done in the YAML. And with that, let's head over to GitHub. All right, so we're over on GitHub, on github.com slash the Jeffrey Stone. My entire Home Assistant configuration is out there for anybody to take a look at. Feel free to steal anything that you think might be useful in your own config. That's why it's out there. But for this, we're talking presence detection. And in my Home Assistant configuration, under the config folder, I have a packages folder. I really like packages. You'll find a lot of my configuration in packages. But we'll scroll down here to the presence.yaml. This has all of my presence related trackers, sensors, automations, scripts. There's a lot of stuff in here we're not gonna cover, but I wanted to hit the high points. So here at the top in my list of sensors is my source of truth. This is the family status sensor that I was referring to before. It's an MQTT sensor, and I just update this when people come and go using automations. So the main automations are 
family has arrived and family has left. And these just trigger based on when entities come and go. So for family has arrived, you can see this webhook. This is the webhook that I was getting the signal from if this then that that I'm not using anymore. I just need to take it out. I have a trigger in here for the family status sensor. Basically, this is my, if something went wrong, intervention way of interacting with this. This is just the group.family that contains all of the person entities. And I find this an efficient way to do this. You could break this out and actually have the persons in here. You could even have your device trackers in here. As you can see, I have one right here for a vehicle. This is kind of my last ditch effort in case, for whatever reason, somebody's turned off location services. I'm not gonna name any names, but that's happened before. And then I have a condition in here just to make sure that the source of truth, the family status is away. We don't want this firing if for some reason the family is home and something triggers this. So that that's just a double check there. And then we fire the script here and this script is what updates this sensor. Family has left, works a lot the same way, has the same triggers except they're going in the opposite direction. This one does have a condition for guest mode because I don't want this to fire if the guest mode is on and then it fires a script just as the other one did that updates that sensor. So down at the bottom in my scripts, I have the family is home script. As you can see, very basic as a condition in here. The condition in the actual automation is redundant because I put it in here, but this just makes sure again that the family is away before we actually fire this script. There's a couple of things we do in here when the family arrives, but then this guy right here is what updates that sensor. Just publishes to the topic that the family's home. Family is away works exactly the same way as a condition for checking the sensor. It does a bunch of stuff as well. At some point, I will do a video on my security system, which is pretty much all of this here. And then at the very end, we publish that the family is away. And that essentially is how Home Assistant knows whether my family is home or away. Now, my presence detection system has a lot of baggage because I've done a lot of tinkering trying to get it right. And a lot of that has complicated the flow. Fortunately, there are lots of different ways to accomplish the same thing. So let's walk through how we could do this completely in the UI if we were starting from scratch today. Okay, I'm over in my test instance of Home Assistant to try to set this up through the UI. Now, I'm assuming that you've already got device trackers set up that maybe even you've gone as far as setting up some people. I've already set up some here. So we're gonna jump straight into how you would start to leverage those. First thing is I would create a source of truth. In this case, I'm gonna do a input Boolean called family is home. The idea being that when this is on, the family is home. When it's off, the family is away. Super simple way to keep track of that and gives you a way to manually manipulate that as well. Now we need to set up an automation for updating that. So we'll set up one for when the family has arrived we're going to use zone triggers for this and because we're leveraging persons we'll put those in here anytime they enter home you could in fact if you wanted to skip the persons you could just go straight with the device trackers in here as well you might want to add the check in here for the manual button so that if you want to do this manually and since we're arriving this needs to go from off to on put in a condition in here for doing that state for that as well we want to make sure it is off before we run our family's home routine and then of course we can leverage our friendly call service to turn that input boolean on and that's it. Anytime these devices come home, it's going to check to make sure that the family was marked away. And if they were, it's gonna mark them as being home. Next, we need an automation for what happens when the family leaves. We'll call this one family has left. We can use zone triggers for this as well. You can put in your persons in here. You can put in when they leave. I'm gonna skip ahead and do my condition here. We're gonna make sure that that family is home is on before we fire this we're going to hit our call service to turn on that input boolean and there we go that's essentially this way you would do that now if you're going to use persons or even device trackers as your triggers for this guy just be aware that you have to consider the condition in which or the scenario in which you leave but other family members stay behind so to do that you would have to have a condition in here that goes and checks the state of every one of those so you'd have to come in here and put put one in here for the person here and say that you want to make sure that they're not home 
And then that way, when anybody leaves, it goes and it checks to make sure everybody else is not home before it runs this. I'm pretty sure that would work. I've never done it that way, but that's in my head how I would do that. I think using the group is a much better way to do that. The problem with that is you're going to have to get into the YAML because I don't know of any way to add groups through the UI. Luckily, Home Assistant gives us a nice supervisor add-on to edit our files in the browser, which is awesome for just quick edits. You can see all your configuration files. I've already set up my family group here. And so now in that family has left automation, this guy right here can simply be a state change for the group. So since this is left, we want it to go from home to not home. And now that will cover all of the people in that group. And when they're all away, then it will trigger this. Don't forget to add your trigger in here for your actually source of truth here. You want to know when that goes from on to off as well so that you can do manual testing if you want to. And then that's it. We've got a super simple way of tracking the family using a single source of truth that we can now leverage in our automations as triggers or conditions. And these automations will keep that up to date. In Home Assistant, presence detection is more art than science. But I hope this video gave you some ideas on how you might tackle some of the challenges you're having with your presence detection. If you like this video, give me the finger by clicking that thumbs up so I know it wasn't all bad. And consider subscribing to my channel for more home automation content. It's free, which means you don't have to give up that subscription to your favorite channel just to add mine. If anything I said was unclear or you still have questions about how I'm using presence detection in Home Assistant, leave a comment or hit me up on Twitter at the Jeffrey Stone. As always, thanks for taking time away from your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, automate the boring stuff.